Hello and welcome to the 36th video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. So now second part of the AdMob stuff, we're actually going to implement the code so we can display the advert on the screen. Sorry if you can hear a siren in the background. There are two steps to doing this and I've got all the files we're going to need open at the top. We need the simple floppy robin.java, hello world scene.cpp, mygnihelper.h and mygnihelper.cpp. And the reason we need this, uh, the C code is because we're going to, inside the initialization in our hello world uh, scene.cpp, just by this call my Java side, here we will call a, J a function on the uh, simple floppy robin activity in the Java to show the advertising banner so that we don't do that on the splash screen. So the main part of the code then will take place inside the Java, simple floppy robin.java and let's get cracking. Now we need uh, to do a couple of tricks in, in this in the sense that we need to be able to call a static method in this Java file from our hello world scene and therefore deal with static variables in the class but we need somehow to be able to reference the actual activity so we'll be using this me here that we set up um, already inside the onCreate. So let's make all of this uh, code then right down the bottom of the class. I'm just going to do some scrolling here so everything scrolls up a little bit so we can see correctly. And remember, I've still got the bottom bracket on the end right at the bottom, but after this static section here, we can start adding the AdMob stuff in here. So the first thing we need then is a static variable, and it's called an AddView, and we'll call it an add view. Now obviously Eclipse won't know what this is so we need to import it. And now I've imported it we need another variable and that will be your AdMob ID. So if your AdMob ID, that's if you remember from the last video the ID that you get that I pointed out when you actually save your newly created ad profile inside AdMob. And that's the thing that starts with this CA-app dash pub and then you've got a load of numbers which for this in this video here I'm not going to put in I'll insert in before I then show you it running on the tablet so you want your app mob ID like this so the next thing we need uh, is the most complicated function um, and this is the function that we're going to use to create the um, the ad banner and the reason it's slightly complicated is because we want to be able to position our ad banner. Before we do that, we're going to need some imports. Now I've got the log already edited in here, view.gravity, viewgroup.layoutparams, and widget.relativelayout. Uh, to be brutally honest with you, the reason um, they're already in before I've typed any code is because I've just cut a big section out of the video because I didn't like the way I explained it, so I'm going to explain it for a second time, but I couldn't be bothered to uh, remove the imports. And what else do we need? We need, as well as add size, we're also going to need gms.adds.addsize, and we're going to need add request as well, I think. And that's all we should be needing for now from these imports. Anything else then we can uh, quickly get from the completion from Eclipse. Okay then, so I'll apologize in advance. This function is the most difficult one of all of the functions to explain because to be brutally honest, I hate doing layout stuff in Android. But essentially what we need to do to create our ad is we need to find a way of putting the ad at the top of the screen and in the middle. So the way we do this is we create a relative layout. We set the parameters of that layout to fill the parent in both the X and Y directions. And then we add that layout to our current activity. And then um, what we need to do is put on that relative layout, we then put our add view. And for our add view, we set the layout parameters to wrap its content. So what will happen is the add view will be wrapped in both directions, so it will be the size of the banner, and this will then be dropped onto the relative layout with a gravity of top, so we're placed at the top of the layout because it's the only object, and then horizontally in the center. So as long as you keep that in mind, everything should make some kind of sense. So we'll say private void and add create, 
and here we go. So the first thing to do then is our add view here. We need to create. So we'll say add view equals uh, new and I want add view and this. So it's got its context. And what we need to do then for our add view is we need to set the unit ID. So we say set add and there's unit ID here. And for here we want our add mob ID. And then we also need to say what kind of size this is going to be. So we can say uh, set add and I think there's size. And then here we can say uh, add size dot banner hopefully. This is a thought we could. I think we can even though the IntelliSense is not saying we can. So we should be able to set banner like this. Good, we can. And now inside a try and clack, a little try and clutch, try and catch block. Oh, I thought it would give me one. Oh, it did. Hang on a minute. Good. Try catch block. That's what we need. Okay. Inside this try here, I'm not going to do anything very bad programming inside the catch here, but we're going to set the uh, add banner up. And just remember, we first of all what we're going to do is we're going to make some layout parameters for the add view, which is to wrap content. So we say. Add view. If you're already familiar with layouts in Android the way it normally works, then this will be simple. If you're not, then this will be a bit confusing. Um, we're both in the same boat there. I never really understand it. So we have uh, layout params. So add view dot layout params, and then I'll call them layout params. So we get confused with the names later, and then we want add view layout parameters is equal to new and ah, I've got caps lock on, still got it on, new. This is irritating, this IntelliSense. New add view layout params. And then inside here, we simply need to say for the uh, horizontal and vertical that we want to wrap the content. So we can say layout params dot wrap content and exactly the same again, layout params wrap content. So that sets up the uh, layout params for our ad view and I don't need that in twice like that to wrap the content. So our ad views will wrap its content. Now we need to set up the relative layout. So we have a relative layout and I'll call it uh, relative And this is the layout then that will be added to our activity and then the add view will be added to this relative layout. So we'll say that equals a new and relative layout and the context is this, so the current activity. And now we want to make some layout parameters. So we'll say relative layout and dot layout params and I'll call it RLP is equal to new and it's relative layout layout params and this works exactly the same as it did for the um, add view above except this time uh, we're going to fill parents so I'm just going to say layout params and just copy and drop this in here and just say fill uh, parent and copy this and paste it in here so our relative layout then is going to fill the parent and last but not least, then on the relative layout itself, we then uh, need to set the gravity. So we set the gravity and this is then gravity dot top. And the other one is gravity and it'll be uh, center horizontal. And I've realized I've made an error. So we've got center horizontal, but of course these are bits so I need a pipe here instead of a comma. So that then sets up the gravity for our relative layout and that's all we need to do for that. The next thing I want to do is go back to our add view and just set the layout parameters to these layout parameters that we created above for the add view and now we can add to our relative layout we can add a view and the, uh, the view that we're going to add is our add view. So that's now added to our relative layout. And now what we do is, is we add our relative layout with the add view in it to our content view um, 
using these uh, layout parameters. So we simply call on the activity add content view and we want to add the relative layout and that's with our RLP. And hopefully that's all we need to do. And believe me, when I first ever came across this, it took me a good day to understand how in the world all that works and get it actually positioned at the top of the screen. So you've had it in a few minutes instead in a video. Um, but that should then be enough to place the ad banner at the top of the screen. The last thing we need to do then is actually load our ad request. So we'll say our ad view and load ad. And then we want our ad request like so. And that's just reminding me that we haven't actually made the ad request. So we need to make an ad request. So we take an ad request and we call it ad request. And that's equal to new and then ad request and then dot builder and dot build, I think. Yes. And that's all we need to do. So that's all of the code. It's a bit complicated and long-winded to go through it. It's confusing as hell with all this layout stuff here. But again, it's a relative layout being added to our activity and we're placing on this relative layout our ad banner so that it appears at the top and in the middle and importantly, in front of everything else. So now that's done, we need then to make our static function that allows us actually to show our advertising banner. I'm just uh, doing some stuff with the... Uh, the bracket set and that's a simple function because we've um, already uh, looked at this kind of functions before so we simply want to say it's a static function so we'll say public and static and then we'll call it show add mob j and i and it's a void obviously and in high, in, inside here, then, we simply want to say uh, me dot run on UI thread. You remember that we've already seen this as an example that I think I did in the uh, in some earlier videos looking at the JNI stuff. So we want new runnable. And inside this uh, run here, we simply need to say add view dot set visibility and then we set the visibility to view dot visible and that's all we need to do. So likewise, if you ever wanted to hide uh, the advertising banner, like I do in traffic like main, you would, you would make a hide add mob JNI and that would use view dot invisible. And that's how you could then, depending on what screen you're calling up, hide the, uh, the advertising banner. So that's all we need to do then inside the Java code and that was the largest part. Now quickly we need to just drop into here and we're just going to make the extern void. This is inside my JNI helper.h and we'll call show add mob JNI and this is a void function which we know by now is always good because it's the quickest we can do. So let's find one that we already have that's a void with a void and I bet we haven't got one now. I've said that we want to look for one. Uh, void and void and void. Okay, let's just take this one here with a void and int. It doesn't really matter. Down to the bottom here. So the name of this then was show add mob j and i. We're not taking in any kind of argument here. I'll just update this. So we need to take out the i here because we're not taking in uh, any argument and of course this is not being called on JNI helper this is being called on the simple floppy robin class so I need to change this and then call static void method and we don't have any arguments for our static void method so that's all we need to do there so now we should be able to actually call the show ad, uh, advertising banner JNI inside the Java and last but not least inside hello world scene inside the initialization I'll just place that here so I'm just going to build everything now make sure it all builds okay it's built so what I'm going to do is export the application and then let's have a look at it running on the in fact it hasn't built I've just seen an error where's the error error in the manifest
Sorry, the error in the manifest was just this uh, couldn't all be on uh, two lines. I've had to put that back. So I'll export this then. Uh, well, first thing I'll do off screen is just put the correct advertising ID here, and then we'll see how the application actually looks on the device. Just very quickly, one thing I've realized just as I've, I've built the application, of course, we've forgot, or I've forgotten inside the um, on create function here to actually put the add create function here. So I'm just going to build and export again and try and rerun the application. Okay, you can see then that the add banner has appeared and it's placed in the middle of the top of the screen, refreshing nicely. It can take a minute or so for the add banner um, to appear, especially when you first run the application for the first time. The font you'll notice is the wrong font on here, but that's because I was um, messing around uh, on the Mac again with the game, so I'd changed the uh, reference for the font in the font file. Anyway, you can see the ad banner working there. So now that we have all that working, um, I'm just going back into the JNI here. I didn't put uh, inside the log I noticed when the log came up, uh, the show ad mob JNI here, but it doesn't really matter. But that's actually then really the last stage certainly for a while for the simple uh, Flappy Robin application and that's um, putting the ad mob banner. Something I'd like to do in the future is adding the leaderboard functionality from the Play Store so that we can actually save online scores for the application but I'm quite pressed for time for the next couple of months I'm trying to get as many videos out as possible in all the series so we'll see if I can maybe get around to that in, two, in, a, in, a, in four or five weeks time. Um, so thanks very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the series so far and see you in another video.